Now we will discuss about the second coat of the eyeball, the second layer of the eyeball, which is called the vascular layer. The man I am talking about, this vascular layer has three different names, but the man is single, but it has three different names. Like the first name of the same man is vascular layer, the second name is nutritive layer, and the well renowned name, you trust me, is the ugal tract. This is the most important and the most well renowned name of this man is ugal tract. So, I will draw a sketch. Uh, I lost my the red marker. Yes, I got it. So, this ugal tract or nutritive layer or vascular layer has three different structures which are full of blood vessels which are full of vascularity right so the first structure if i coming from outer surface to the inner surface if i come from anterior to the posterior side the first layer is called iris which is the colorful structure which i can see with my naked eyes which you can see with your naked eyes if you can look in my eyes you can see the colorful structure the roundish colorful structure in my eye and that is called Iris. And the second one is called ciliary body. The second one is called ciliary body. And the third one is choroid. If you can zoom here, the three different structures of this uveal tract or nutritive layer or vascular are the iris, the ciliary body, and the choroid. Now I will draw a structure here to, to make you better understand regarding this vascular layer. This is whole uveal tract or the uveal tract you can see. Now, if I move from posterior surface of the eyeball towards the anterior surface of the eyeball, the first structure of this vascular nutritive or uveal tract layer is choroid. The choroid is the first layer of the vascular layer which is nutritive or vascular or the uveal tract. Right? So, the choroid has the maximum vascularity of the eyeball. This is choroid. And if you move forward towards the anterior surface of the eyeball, the junction where the junction where this choroid is attaching with or meeting with or junctioning with this triangular structure is called chorasrena. I will discuss about this structure or this point later. First, remember this: the choroid is attaching. The choroid is attaching with this triangular structure, and this triangular structure is called ciliary body, right? This triangular structure is called ciliary body, and the point. These all you can say that ciliary body is actually the extension of this choroid, right? This choroid is meeting with the ciliary body, and again. As I said, this ciliary body is actually the extension of this choroid. So, you can say this is an other structure which is called the colorful structure of the eye, which we can see with the naked eye is called iris. So, the iris is also the extension of the ciliary body, right? Now, Right? So the cornea is, if we have discussed 
very precisely the frontal surface, the frontal or you can see the anterior surface of the iris is cornea is here, right? So this is cornea and upper side of the structure is called if I can make a bigger eyeball, so you, now you can better understand this is this structure is called sclera, the toughest membrane, which we have discussed in our lecture. This is called uh, sclera, the toughest membrane, the whitish of the eyeball, and now again this structure, which is the vascular structure of the eyeball, which is called choroid, is beneath the toughest membrane or whitish of the eyeball, or you can see the sclera. Beneath the sclera, there is choroid, there is ciliary body, and then the iris. Right? So, if we discuss this further, I have made another structure, and this, the, the brain marker, you can see, this structure is called the crystalline lens. Right? This structure is called crystalline lens and this structure has the ability to increase its size, to increase its power like if the crystalline lens wants to increase its thickness, it can increase its thickness and if it wants to decrease its thickness, it can decrease its thickness as well. The matter of fact is like the cornea had 43 diopters of the power, like exactly like the crystalline lens has also the contribution of the power, like cornea. Cornea has maximum contribution in the battery power of the eyeball. If the total power of the eyeball is 58 diopters, the maximum contribution of the eyeball, the maximum contribution of the uh, power of the eye is 43 diopters, which is contributed by the cornea. But our crystalline lens have also some contribution of power of the diopteric power of the total power of the eyeball and that is 15 diopters, right? So it is also helpful but this crystalline lens is not the part of the vascular or nutritive or nuclear tract. This crystalline lens is not the part of the uveal tract. The uveal tract has just three parts, iris, ciliary body and choroid, right? And these three structures have maximum vascularity and this crystalline lens do not have any type of blood vessels, any type of vascularity, any type of pigmentations. The crystalline lens do not have any pigmentation, right? Do not have any blood vessels. This is the transparent most structure of the eyeball like the cornea. So we have discussed two different optical structures, two different transparent structures of the eye and that was the first structure is called the cornea and the second structure is called the crystalline lens and both of them has ability to refract the light on the sensitive layer of the retina to bend the light on the sensitive layer of the retina if I made a light which is coming from the air and it's passing through the cornea or penetrating through the cornea and also the crystalline lens as well so both of these sources of the power bend the light on the sensitive layer of the retina Right? So, these two optical structures or these two transparent structures or these two powered structures of the eyeball can bend the light on the sensitive layer of the retina. Right? Now, but I am again say I am talking about the choroid, iris and uh, uh, ciliary body as well. These three structures are the part of the vascular layer. But, crystalline lens is not the part of the vascular layer. Remember it. The reason why I am talking about this is because you can see this fibers like structures this crystalline lens is attaching with the fibers and these fibers are called zonules or suspensory ligaments, right? These fibers, I am talking about these fibers. These fibers are named as zonules and also, it has name, another name, you can say suspensory ligaments, right? So, our crystalline lens is attaching with, through these fibers, with the ciliary body. Or you can say, the ciliary body is attached with these zonules and these zonules are attached with the edges or periphery of the 
crystalline lens right so through this these fibers or through these suspensory ligaments or through these zonules our lens has ability to increase its power and this increase in power when we see at the near object then we we want to uh, we want to study we want to read anything we want to write anything if we look at the near object if i am looking at these markers and if all these markers are clear to me if i can focus properly over here it means my lens is increasing its power right so it's increasing its power that's why i can see my near object clearly and this process in which our crystalline lens uh, our crystalline lens can increase its dioptric power from 15 diopters to maximum this increase in the power of the crystalline lens is called accommodation right so we have discussed the three different layers of the eye wall the first sorry the three different the structures of the euclid tract is the first one was if we move from posterior surface to the anterior surface the first structure is called choroid the second structure is called ciliary body and the last one structure is called iris and iris is the structure which we can see which we, which we can see with the naked eye right you can see in my eyes the roundish structure the colorful roundish structures in my eyes called iris right now uh, i think 